In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The service at which we bless the oils every year in this cathedral is always a very special service. And despite the fact that the service this year is going to be so different, it is a very, very special service. A doubly special service, even though it is so pared down. Because this year, it is a service that is a sign of faith and of hope. Why do I say that? It would be so easy for us, as we look round the cathedral, being so aware of the people who aren't with us, because the only people who will be with us in the cathedral this year will be the cathedral chapter and the LMA deans. We won't have the people who would want to come. We won't have the mingling at the door afterwards, the chatting. We won't have the sharing of the food. We won't have the congregation who chose to be here. And it would be so easy simply to be aware of the people who can't be here. But actually the very act of gathering together to bless and consecrate the oils is in itself a sign of faith and of hope. Why do I say that? Because although, as we have discovered during this time of COVID, there are many wonderful things we can do through Facebook and Zoom, and my thanks go to all those who've discovered the wonders of this technology, and especially to our own David, who is recording this as I stand here. But the one thing you can't do through Zoom and through Facebook, you cannot anoint anyone virtually. And so, actually, to have this service is a sign of faith and hope, because it's a sign of what we hope we will be able to do through these oils. It's a statement of faith and hope. Prayer, of course, is always in itself a sign of faith and hope. So why isn't prayer on its own enough. Well, of course, prayer is on its own enough. And Christians are used to prayer. We are used to praying. We are used to praying as a sign of faith. And we as Christians know that we don't always get the answer to prayer we're hopeful. We don't always get what we long for. We accept that God's ways are not our ways. It isn't like Father Christmas. We are used to persevering in prayer and crying in prayer and wrestling in prayer. So why the oils? Because as Christians, we are committed to physicality, to the importance of stuff. And that is what the great festival of Easter is all about. As Christians, we rejoice in the death of Jesus. And that's a very strange thing. We know we are saved by the death of Jesus on the cross. But on Easter Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, the physical resurrection of Jesus. Now, we don't know exactly what that means. We were not there. And we have a multiple witnesses to what that resurrection was. And they are all slightly different. The resurrected Jesus cooked and ate fish. The resurrected Jesus appeared through locked doors. The resurrected Jesus walked with a couple of people on the road to Emmaus and passed as an ordinary regular human being. And yet, on the road to Damascus, the resurrected human Jesus could only be seen by the Apostle Paul. And it's not a question of, well, some of them got it right and some of them got it wrong. And if we argue and think about it hard enough, we will understand exactly what the resurrection means. No, of course not. The mere fact of the difference is the importance because the resurrection is not something we can get right. And so when the fathers of the church put it down in a statement in the creed, they said, and on the third day he rose again. And that enshrines our Christian commitment to physicality. And yes, therefore, prayer is enough. But these oils that will be blessed and consecrated in this service today say and enshrine our commitment to our physicality. And so they are a sign today of faith and hope that we will, 
be able to return to a world in which we can pray closely with one another, in which we can lay hands on one another, in which the people for whom we pray can be anointed with these oils. The reading from St James, in fact the first Bishop of the Church, the brother of Jesus, says to us, if we wish to pray for somebody who is sick, take oil and anoint them with prayer. And of course in the early church, just like we baptise with water, which is still something we use for washing with normally, so oil in the early church was a normal part of healing and washing. So oil then was normal, it's become slightly rarefied, it's something we eat with rather than wash with today, but nevertheless it was normal. It is a normal part of prayer in the early church. It's slightly rarefied for us, and as Anglicans we didn't use it for several hundred years. We're using it again as part of prayer. It's part of our physicality. It has been given back to us as prayer. We don't have to use it, but they are gifts to us. The oil of healing. The oil of the catechumens, that's a, a funny word, it simply means people, either babies or children or adults, who are being prepared for baptism. And as they are, especially if they're adults or teenagers, as part of their preparation they can be prayed with and anointed with the oil of the catechumens to strengthen them on their journey towards this great commitment of faith in Jesus. And then in baptism itself, after they are baptised, they are anointed with oil as, their, as a, a sign of their acceptance and of their being filled with the Holy Spirit. So take these oils and use them when you are allowed to in your ministry for healing, for preparation for baptism and for anointing a baptised Christian at any time in their life when they feel they need the extra strengthening of the Holy Spirit, but particularly in the baptism service. But particularly remember, at this time, at this time of Covid, not only are our prayers a sign of faith and hope, this service when we bless these oils that we cannot yet use is a sign of our faith and our hope of a time to come when we can use these oils in our prayers. Amen.